Welcome to Fresh Convos, episode been waiting. seven. Been My waiting. man Rashad's in the house. Give him up, you know. Say what's up, Rashad, to everybody. What it is, what it is. How you doing, man? Chilling, man. Chilling. That's good. You can hear Excited. me, right? Perfectly. Word. All right. Let's just get this going, man. So, um, where are you from? Northeast DC, RPC, Rick Spock. <laughs> <laughs> and what school did you go to? I went to LaSalle Elementary. Then I went to Bertie Backus. Then I went to that Catholic hell we call Ca Carol. <laughs> then, I <went> to <laughs> then I went to Duke Ellington. All right. And what inspired you to be an MC when you were in Duke Ellington? I was a writer first before I rapped. Okay. But I always liked hip hop, naturally, you know. And um, it wasn't until when I went into Duke, I saw my man Purnell. You remember Tony? Yeah. Remember Purnell? Tony, yes. Okay. Purnell, Khalil, Zach, and Philly were in a cipher. And I was like, I think I can do this. And that kind of sent, you know, sent the thought rolling. All right. What were you majoring in, in at Duke? Literary, literary media. Literary media. And yeah. what was your first MC name? <laughs> I think I think it was just Rashad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because because remember, I used to love Tupac in DC growing up. I, as much as I love East Coast, I still love South and West Coast. Mm -hmm. So I remember Tupac said, "My name is just Tupac." So I was like, "I'm just going to call myself Rashad." So I think that was my first name. <laughs> what hip hop groups um, or artists inspired you at that time? We're talking about early, the early times of Rashad the MC. I would say. Definitely cellar dwellers, mm -hmm. immediately organized confusion. Anyone that was kind of considered left. But at the same time, I still liked Compton's Most Wanted and DJ Quick and people like that, you know. And I still loved, um, who was the people to get out, get out, I don't love you. Who was that? <laughs> uh, um. I have no idea. UMCs. I still like UMCs. UMCs. Okay. Yeah, and I like Cool Keith. I remember liking the people that were in J-Ru that kind of went to the left, like, you know, right. of hip-hop. So, when you say UMCs, the version, the Blue Cheese version? or the, Yes, the Blue Cheese the, version. Or the hardcore Get Raw version. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so we spoke to Khalil last week, um, and he spoke oh, about uh, your group Mysticism. So yes. um, tell us how you met Khalil and how you came up with the concept of the group at that time. Okay, I used, I used to see Khalil even before I went to Duke around Riggs because he lived, we lived in Riggs Park, RPC. Oh, and then when I finally went to, <laughs> and then when I finally went to Duke, I saw Khalil and I was like, Yo, ain't you, ain't you from Riggs? And he was like, yeah, you know. And so it kept going because I was still afraid to rap in a way around them because I thought Philly and Khalil and everybody was so dope and they were so unhinged, mm -hmm. you know. And um, and they were quick to call some shit whack. So I was <laughs> like, man, I'm not getting up in there <laughs> and you know not being tight, you know. And so. One day, you know, as it kept evolving and I got into it, uh, I was like, we got to be in a group together. And this was right around the time Freestyle Union. And I and because of Sub-Z, Terrence, a Mortal Kombat, and plus I'm a Scorpio, I was like, I'm going to call myself Scorpion. And since he was alien, I was like, we got to start a group. And then I think he came up with mysticism. I'm not sure. It was so long ago. Mm -hmm. okay. And I was like... And that was ba it's basically some solid dweller shit. It was like realms in reality. It was like, let's go fantasy, but at the same time, let's still talk about everyday shit. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, what is DC hip hop to you? It, it's, it's a weird bridge, and, and, and people like Black Ending and all the blur. Like, there's the go go side of hip hop, which is not really for me so much. And then there's what my sister would call the lyrical miracle side. You know, like <laughs> us, you know. So it's DC is this, is this weird bridge of the go-go hip-hop 
and and us and our crew and everyone that came through us and even to the people coming up now, you know. And now it's more of a merging now. Right. But um, but be- when, when we were coming up in the nineties, it was straight down the line. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, and, and but people like Black Indian kind of were the the bridge. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Do you check for any DC artists old or new? Man, I still listen to us. Like, you know, Raynell put out something. Khalil put out something. You put out something. Flex Matthews. Uh, I like Los from Backyard. So if Backyard drops something, I'll listen to him <laughs> rap. Because he, he got a force. Uh, but not, 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 you know, I guess, I guess I'm sort of like constricted that I still listen to people like us, pretty much. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um. Did you ever consider yourself a battle MC getting into this? Y- yes. At one point in time, I was like, dude, I, that's what I w- went off. Yes. Mm-hmm. But then eventually I was just like, I'm <laughs> done with battle. I'm done with battling kind of. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Do you have any memories of U Street? Oh, man, Tons. Of course, the battle between the scavengers, you know, <laughs> amphibians <laughs> versus scavengers. Um, face, mm-hmm. you know, organic symmetry. You remember organic symmetry? Yeah. The face and once. Oh my gosh! I thought they were, I thought they were the best thing <laughs> since sliced bread <laughs> when they came out. <laughs> I was like, no one is better than these niggas, dog. I was like, this. I was like, this is what you know. Um, infinite loop. Mm-hmm. Coffee House. Right, right. Um, Ernesto. Ernesto, yes. Ernesto, oh, man. Yes, sir. Yes, um, sir. What was your Nayala experience? Do you remember? I remember. You, you remember, didn't mention the battle. <laughs> you didn't mention the, yeah, the scavengers battle. Yes. The I remember, AKA remember, W Street. <laughs> yes. That was a real thing. Remember when Saul Williams came? You remember when Saul Williams came to yes. Nayala? Yes. That was fat. I remember when Jay, remember when Jay was doing this song. He was like, "I'm on the outside," and he just it was like real crazy. And then John was like, "I'm on the inside." I remember like <laughs> weird shit, <laughs> you know. Um, That's what's up. Um, we've recently lost a very good, talented brother by the name of Chadwick Boseman. Um, Boseman. Yes. Uh, rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Um, talk to us about uh, Ron Deferred and what was his invol- his and your involvement in it. Well, I, I was like a sort of a wild card. I, I remember, I think Priest, if, I, if I'm not sure, if I can remember, I think Priest and Kokai was doing their role, but they ended up, I think, either touring or they had to go somewhere. And so uh, Camilla invited me to do Rom Deferred, and that's when I met Chad. That's the first time I ever even heard of uh, hip hop theater. That was like the first time even seeing it. Um, and I remember meeting Chad, man. He was just on fire because he was because re- you know the stuff you see in the movies is is him professional, mm-hmm. and that stuff then was more like raw professional, like. I wish a lot of people could have seen Chad then. Like he was he was him and Jabari. They used to light it up, mm. and um, he was just cool as shit, man. I remember I used to play him like Bob Dylan and like Modest Mouse and Radiohead and shit. And uh, the funniest shit, the funniest shit we had one day. I went up to Chad. I said, "Chad, what's the difference between erotica and pornography?" And he said, "Whatever you can't show your mama is pornography." And we just started laughing. You know, he was just cool. He was just cool as shit. Mm-hmm. He was everything. Yeah, that's that dude. I say his name like Bozeman, like he's shooting a three. Like celebrate your ancestors now, you know. <laughs> Word. What was the, I mean the experience? Before experience. experience. What was the experience like? It was incredible because I had to freestyle and I learned about theater. And plus, you know, RBI was there, so I was tight with him and Kadeem. I was tight with Meredith, um, Jabari, of course, since Origin. Uh, a bunch of people. I can't think of right now. It's crazy how your mind like stops. Um, mm. Laquise, she was awesome. I mean, it was just incredible. It was like family, and and I learned a lot about rapping through my diaphragm. Mm. 
I remember Camilla was just like, you need to right from your diaphragm, not your throat. And I, so I learned a lot from Ron Defer. That's really dope. No. So did you know, like, when you saw Black Panther, did you know, like, wow, <laughs> I was in the same play as this cat, yo. Dude, to this day, <laughs> and people have laughed. You know how I have not seen Black Panther yet? <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I just, I would just figure it. I'm just like, that's, I, that's my man. You know, I'll see it around, you right, know. Right, right, right. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're ready, yeah. when you're ready to see it, you'll see it. That's, yeah. that's what's up. That's an honest, that's an honest answer. <laughs> <laughs> Word. So how were you introduced to the Amphibians Collective? If I can remember, didn't Free Saw Union have like this breakup and there was like a beef between them and like us, I kind of, in a way? Or something like that. It was like supposedly some of us have been representing Freestyle Union without their consent, and I think. It, but I'm, I can't really remember. It's, it all seems jargo. And then I remember Khalil was like, "No, nah, we're gonna start some new shit." And then I remember being at Zach's house. It was me, Philly, you, Claude. Um, I think that's. Oh. Yeah. And I think we just started recording songs, and that's when somebody was like amphibians, and I was like, "Oh, mm -hmm. I'm, I was like, of course." Yeah, Khalil actually claimed the name that uh, that day because we were obviously in the aquarium, which mm -hmm. is Zach's uh, Zach's studio basement, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there was a time that um, that yeah, Freestyle Union, and uh, well, we did go apart. From from Freestyle Union, I think mm -hmm. I think it was a uh, I thought it was a great idea actually, you know what I mean? It's just because both were awesome, you know, and uh, we went our own way. Much love to Freestyle Union, though, you know. What totally, I'm saying? totally gave us the. I mean, we've met a lot of people through Freestyle Union, and like you know, basically what like eighty or ninety percent. <laughs> Set <laughs> of us was in freestyle union. So, dude, yeah. I learned my I learned what I call my Wu Tang philosophy because of the MCs in freestyle union and around them. Mm -hmm. Like, right. um, like basically, like people like you, Shatungwa, and Spirit always made me realize the s like the fresh essence of hip hop. Like, never forget that. Right. Like, like C made me realize. But sometimes I would keep have lines in my head during freestyle. You see, made me realize, nah, just be spontaneity, spontaneity, like spontaneity. Mm -hmm. Just be straight raw. Uh, Rub, Black Indian, and Ghost made me realize you can get better as you keep going. If you notice, some niggas could rap for like days. Philly made me realize just spit. I don't care what you do, rap. He was like, don't don't think all that. Just be just flow. Right, right. Khalil Shatungwa. I mean, Khalil Shamir. And John made me realize you can go as left as you want. Mm -hmm. Like, don't care about it. Raynell and Artemis made me realize you can be boom, be boom, bap as hell. Right, you right, know. right. Sub, Sub Z made me realize be precise. Koka made me realize be musical. Priest was like, Priest made me realize, you know, because he always had punchlines everywhere. It's like, you can always have, you know, know all your surroundings. So I learned a lot from Freestyle mm -hmm. Union, for real. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and plus... They were very inviting to a lot of MCs from mm. from everywhere. Unless, of course, yeah. you came off whack and it was just like <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and like, and wow. Jay uh Jay and Zach made me realize to keep it at a genius level. Like yes. if you're gonna do it, keep it at a genius level. Don't do that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like you said, if you was whack, you had to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean it was it was pretty dope. It was like, you know, it wasn't like for say a boot camp, but it was more like a school. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. Just restyling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, and so, it's, when you think about it, it's some magical shit. Think about it. Massive ceremony in a cipher, in a mm -hmm. circle. Like, mm -hmm. it's some, yeah, it's some shit. Yes, it's definitely, shit. definitely. And, um, I mean, I mean, I always wanted to thank Freestyle Union because, I mean, you know, we did come to Amphibians and we became our own entity. Mm hmm and we did, mm -hmm. uh, we did a lot, and of course we took a break, but we, we've grown separately, and then now we're together again. You know what I mean? Exactly, so, exactly. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's really it's amazing, you know what I'm saying? 
Word. Um, so music has evolved with you uh, during college. Um, yes. What artists did you start getting into um, in college that made you sort of change your, your style and your whole persona of uh, music? All right. So, I'm, Rashad, right at, so Rashad, the Scorpion, you know what I'm saying? I got it. So, uh -huh. Right at the end of, of 96, when I graduated Duke, I met Ben Tyree. We eventually joined in a band. We made a band called Miscellaneous Flux. And he would always play like Zeppelin and like Frank Zappa and a lot of like amazing rock and roll. And when I got to college, I met a lot of punk rock cats, and they always would play punk rock. Mm -hmm. So from, from Ben and meeting a bunch of punk rock dudes, I really got into the punk, like, into the punk element of culture. I was really into punk rock like hell. And, and like uh, classic, I guess classic rock then, like Sabbath, Zeppelin. And then I was, became a Jimi Hendrix freak. Like I, I thought I was like... And, and I was and I was really into Edgar Allan Poe, so my whole thing was like Jimmy Edgar Poe, you know. <laughs> that was like <laughs> that was my whole shit right there. Oh, no. Um, so. But because in college I met Tim, I still made I still laid in hip hop. So I was like, well, let me fuse this shit, this punk and this hip hop shit, and this rock shit, and all the drum and bass and all the elect great electronic shit was coming out. I was like, I'm just gonna fuse this shit. And one day I was looking at Eon Flux and I turned into the dictionary and I saw the word miscellaneous. So I was like, I'm gonna just call this shit miscellaneous flux. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's crazy. So why don't you break down for the for for everybody the groups? All right. So when you started it, okay, so let's say for example, let's go from mysticism, right? Mm -hmm. When you went to college, what was next? Okay, it was it was mysticism, which was like fantasy like it was like it was like the dc cellar dwellers in a nutshell okay um um then it was miscellaneous flux which was like because i got into a lot of jazz at the time too i was freestyling a lot of jazz so it was um it was like hard jazz hard rock and roll and hip-hop okay and then i did this thing called crystal stairs and broken brooms with this sister i met named yvonne and tim which is a song wilderness is from you know, it, it was an album. We never put an album out, but we, we, we put out, I think we somehow gave, put out a couple of songs or something. Okay. And, um, and then we did a band called the Avant God Violence, which was me and Born Infinite came up with that name. And then me, Tim Born, and John came up kind of with the concept. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it kind of spawned right around True School. Sort of, which is like a little bit after, because I was in, I was up in New York, running from DC to New York on your floor with Spec, you know, with <laughs> yeah. Bean, and so I just had this whole fusion of electronic jazz, hip hop, rock, and that band, Avant Garde Violence, was like, it was like punk, free jazz, industrial hip hop. It was like some new shit, <laughs> you know. It was like some real new shit. That's some genius shit right there. Okay, so, um. So then, okay, so avant-garde violence, and then from avant-garde violence came Cornell West there, right? Yes. Uh, we, the avant-garde violence broke up, okay. and everyone kind of went on their way. And I, I started a project called Elion. It was called Void's Moan, but then I changed it, the name to Eliana Houdoun, which I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'm thinking I'm going to do it around, like, December when it gets cold. And the, But Tim came up with he said he wanted to go another place and he had these different archetypes like angela davis something or uh it was another archetype but then he was like what about the cornell west theory and i was like hell yeah <laughs> you know i was like nah that's that's what's up so that's when the cornell west theory came up mm -hmm. and then i pretty much didn't do any other solo stuff i like buried my head in the right. cornell west theory and this other band called voids moan which is now a different energy now but that was uh that's kind of where I am at the present. Okay. So let's talk about Cornell West theory. Who is who is involved? Like it was you and Tim, right? And John, John Moon, Sam Levine, 
Yvonne Gilmore and Katrina Skinner. Her name is Shamsia Katrina now, but mm -hmm. that was that was it. Okay. Wow. And how many albums albums have you guys put out? We always start from Second Rome, even though we had two albums before that. But it was like it, it's like about like seven right now. It's like okay. seven albums. Was and it like have albums e or like EPs or? No, we they were like albums. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, everyone was an album, and but we're about to drop an EP. I think like in a month or so. Okay. Word. And where can they find uh, the music? Oh, just go to the Cornell West Theory Bandcamp, and you can also hear. Uh, this thing called Let the Dirt Say Amen, which is sort of Tim's project also from with Dirty Church. Mm -hmm. So Let the Dirt Say Amen and then the Cornell West Theory Bandcamp. You can hear everything. Dope. And um, what, do you have any favorite songs you like uh, performing? Or that from the Cornell like West Theory? Yes. Uh, I like the song Murder Bay, mm -hmm. uh, Anita, um, Paper Tigers, even though I'm not on it, Paper Tigers is so fun. Captives, mm -hmm. but but I like a lot of them for different reasons. Like, this is one when we sample Nora Jones. Did you ever hear that one? I think so, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I like that one a lot actually because it's some fantasy carnival, shit, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. who does who does the production or the, the music behind it? Is it like a live band or does like Tim do? No, it was like. It's sort of like Nine Inch Nails. It's it's like how Tim does most of like ninety eight percent of the music, and then the band would play a live. But now since Sam isn't in the band anymore, and John John is John is there, but John is focused in a new direction. So Tim pretty much makes all the music. Tim makes well. Oh, okay. So Tim makes mm -hmm. most of the music. And the MCs with with you, and mm -hmm. uh, okay, that's dope. So y'all look out for that. Uh, Cornell West Theory coming out soon. And of course, look back on all the other album that's other albums that are out. Indeed. Um, so you, you enjoy books. I... Uh, what books have you read that inspired you lyrically? And can you name your like five top books that you would suggest? All right. In, in high school, my teacher she hated hip hop. She was like, <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she was like, it's not a real art form. She was like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> Cause I used to, uh, I used to always hit this line by John. I jump off a of picture. I'm a strange humanoid. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know? And so because I used to read a lot, one day we were reading Samuel Beckett waiting for Godot and something hit me to be like, what if Samuel Beckett rapped? Or what if Alice Walker rapped? Mm -hmm. Or what if like Toni Morrison rapped? And so I was like, I'm going to make sure, even though I'm on some flow hip hop shit, I'm going to make sure I'm always literal, like literary based in my, in my writing. Mm -hmm. You know, which kind of sometimes, my sister sometimes thinks is, it could be too abstract or too overwhelming for your layman person or whatever. I don't give a fuck in a way at times. Sometimes I give a fuck, sometimes I don't. But if Bill Street Could Talk by James Baldwin, Mm -hmm. Um, William Burroughs. Anything that nigga's weird, but that but he he, he just made me think different, you know. Like um, August Wilson. Oh, what's that play called? I can't believe I should be. I should be ashamed of not knowing this play. Joe Turner's come and gone. August mm -hmm. Wilson. Mm -hmm. Um, Samuel Beck is waiting for Godot. It was huge. Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower. You right. know, it's a bunch of other stuff I can't really think of that inspired me lyrically, but those are like, uh, and you know, we, it, I grew up Seven Day of Venice, but my father also, in a way, with his mustard seed, he gave me a mustard seed of Islam. So I kind of grew up Islam Christianity. So like certain books of the Bible and the Quran, like certain parts of it really inspired me when I was really young. Right. And, right. um, and Harlem Nights by Eddie Murphy. I used to, <laughs> that shit <laughs> inspired me to want to rap in a weird way. That's dope. And uh, are you reading any new books now? Or are you... I'm, read, I'm reading books more based on kind of spirituality. Mm -hmm. Like I'm reading this one book about, uh, uh, 
it's sort of like I can't I can't even explain it. This shit is it's amazing though, but it's something like like black melanin matter. It's like some Kemet shit, mm -hmm. and it's just about how um, you are just deeper. It's basically you're deeper than just this vessel you're in, and there's layers upon layers upon layers of your of your infinite self. Like this shit never stops, Joe. One day me and you will stop, but this shit never stops. <laughs> this shit is forever. So you know. Word. Believe that, yo. Word. Um. So you talked about moving to New York. How was that experience for you? And which part of New York did you live in? If you mind. New York was was amazing, and it sucked in a way for me. It sucked because miscellaneous flux. We left to New York because. Me and Ben were like, DC isn't the place for this. Every time we tried to go do a show, people would be like, oh, that shit is too rock or it's too hip hop. But then when we got to New York, the niggas said the same exact shit to us. They was like, yo, this shit is too hip hop. This is too, it is too rock. So we couldn't find a place. But New York showed me the, the key for endurance and, and, the, and the pace of capitalism. Mm. Like, like being like, for example, you could be on a train in New York. Somebody's blasting music, loud as shit. Everyone's angry, but then ten stops later, someone laughs and everyone's happy. So it shows you you can endure through life, right? It, it, you know. So I I love New York for that. I was living in Harlem. I was at one sixteenth and Saint Nick. <laughs> you know, I always remember Smooth B because when I was living there. Then I lived near Avenue N, kind of just a little bit away from Coney Island. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm just Carolacking it. So I was like, no, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on right. Joe's floor. I'm going to be on Bean's floor. I'm going to be, you know, Cesar, my man. Mm -hmm. And I was just, because I was going back and forth to D.C. and New York. Word. So you guys had a had a hard time um, getting shows? Or what was that, yes. what was that like? Because basically, I know as experiencing uh, performing in New York, they're, they're kind of open-minded, depending where, depend, always depending where you're, you're going to perform. Like if you're exactly. going to perform... In the Lower East Side, for example, I would say they would be more open to a to a miscellaneous flux there. Being, it's crazy because being if they're going to be like a hip hop show or just like because they do mix mix it up. I noticed that like they they mix up. Well, if someone says like, "Yo, we do hip hop, but it's sort of different," you know. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. open to doing that, so you can have like you know nice and smooth, and then some other. So some other group exactly. is just like, wow, this is this is either amazing or weird or like you know, yeah. So a lot of a lot of um, I mean venues in in New York, just depending. I don't know where you guys were were like you know trying to no, format. That's different. where most of the gigs we got were Lower East Side. Okay, yeah. so yeah, but even still, sense. like you know. When, I mean, not to cut you off, but like, for example, no, no, you like, if you were going to perform at B.B. King's, rest in peace, B.B. King's. Rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it'll be different because they'll be like, well, you said you were a hip hop group and mm -hmm. we have a hip hop, like, you know, people who love going to hip hop shows come to your show. And I don't know, they'll, yeah. they'll question it versus people in the L.E.S. being like, oh, okay. This is what you guys do. Cool, you know. We'll we'll set you up with these, like Def Jux MCs, and then like you know whatever. Like you know, it was always a mix. Yeah, and we opened up for Slum Village, and people liked us. And then we opened up for Method Man, and all you heard was boo, <laughs> 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 boo, Wu Tang. Yeah, you know, well, and I was just like, that's what it is. You know, fuck it, let's go. I mean, that's 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 Wu Tang. That's everyone who opened for Wu Tang got booed. Um, I, I enjoyed it because I just kept yelling. I just kept yelling. The avant garde is coming. No matter what y'all boo, is that's what's coming. I just kept yelling. <laughs> nah, that's. But dope. also, also Afro punk. When Afro punk first began with James Spooner, yeah. he liked Miscellaneous Flux. But then he was like, "Well, it's weird." But then it's too hip hop, so even we couldn't even get on because we they it was just wasn't I guess punk enough. So oh my God, we had that's that problem. Strange because I know he would let. Well, I don't know. He kind of left after, but there was a yeah. lot of hip hop groups after going um, yeah. performing at Black. I mean, you know, yeah, 
um, mm -hmm. Afro punk. So, like, that's crazy. That's there crazy. it is. I think at that time he wanted to keep that formula. Mm -hmm. But you guys mm -hmm. could have. You guys could have. Um, I think I we should have. I don't. I, I, don't, I didn't understand either. I didn't understand either. That's just weird. That's like you know, telling bad brains. Well, like you know, you guys are hard, but like. You know, You're too I don't reggae know enough. Too, too reggae. <laughs> we don't know about that. You know, <laughs> that's 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 interesting. That's interesting. You guys approach uh, Afro punk. Um, I don't see why you can't now. It's just a lot of people doing it at once. I think that's yeah, the yeah. Thing. It's a lot of. Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of politics going on in that oh, man. too. Like. Yeah, I swear to I swear to God, Joe. If I ever play Afro punk, I will literally say before I start the show. I hope the younger <laughs> bands can get some more, you know, press soon. Oh yeah, you know? definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I believe, like I said, that that New York experience, LES, would be like the best, like mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. best place. Like you know, like there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of different venues that are open to like new music, no matter what you use people yeah. can make instruments out of legos and basically like you know perform yeah like, uh -huh. what is this like you know well you and know, shout out to chris it. carr because chris carr was the first to pump us yes chris carr yes. yep he was the first to pump us mm. my man bro do you keep do you still keep in touch with that bro yeah ja ja but i make sure after after Bozeman transition, after Chad transition, I'm gonna make sure I keep in contact with anyone I have what I consider art connects. Right, right. Because all we got is us. Okay, so especially uh, while that that do 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 shit is out. <laughs> <laughs> Her booty is lure, coochie is gushy. Yeah, yeah, we gotta keep in contact. Oh man. So uh, describe your style of music you're doing now. All right, wanna. It's, it's a couple of projects I'm still uh, juggling. Like me and Raynell have been uh, talking for a minute about this thing called Raises Predators. And it's just about hardcore boom bap. It's like if you threw company flow in a trash can, you know, that, you know, <laughs> uh, just some hard ass boom bap. So, and, and, you know, we've been putting it off, but now we have like, we have sort of like about a, a eight song thing. Mm -hmm. And so soon, I'm thinking 2021. I'm gonna. We just want to say fuck it. We just gonna release single by single. Don't worry about the album. We just gonna release single by single. Right. So raises predators. Um, anything with Tim. If he's doing dirty, let the dirt say him in dirty church. Uh, the Cornell West theory. I'm down. But one of my main focuses is called Messiah and Glitch, and yeah. it's it's sort of like cyberpunk hip hop. And what made me think about it was I just just studying the world where the world is going with technology. I, and I used to talk to a lot of my friends and family and they had no clue about the cybernetic revolution that is coming. And so I was like, you know, what? I got to do an album about this shit. I got to do a project. Mm -hmm. And so basically it's just some it's just, the concept is that it's, there's these tribal leaders in their 40s. And they, and they hook up with black market artificial intelligence to open what they call the new sphere, like the, the Earth's mind. And when they do that, they will free humanity and, and all enslavement outside of this glitch we're stuck in in the matrix. So that's basically what it's called. And for this one, usually I get Tim to do all the music, but I was like, I'm going to get Tim, I'm going to get John, I'm going to get Face from Organic Symmetry, mm -hmm. my man Denman, uh, Artemis, Theory, and it's taken, it took me a long fucking time to kind of build it, mm -hmm. but I'm finally going to release the first EP this month. That's, that's dope. You heard it first, y'all. Listen to this person right here. William Gibson Spirit. It's very, very much like, you know, do you think people, do you think it will go over some people's heads once they hear it? Or what do you think? Like, you know. I'm I'm being really strict in this lane. Like for example, if I'm say if I'm doing Raises Predators or Cornell West Theory or Amphibian, and I forgot Amphibians, whenever whenever we decide some new shit, I'm there. Whenever I do any of those groups, I'll just send it to whoever. But with with, with the cyber hip hop, I call it Psyop. Mm -hmm. But this Psyop shit, 
it's either like you're into cyberpunk or Afropunk or anything that's left. I'm only focusing to that type of people and people who love hip hop, no matter what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to be looking for a specific, um, I'm not going to be open. I'm going to be really tunnel vision on how I promote and who I promote to. Right. You know, um, um, so what is, uh, uh, what is, uh, science fiction hip hop? Cellar dwellers, um, organized confusion. Remember, remember the uh, the song about the uh, babies talking to each other in the fetus. <laughs> yes. Remember? It? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I, I was like, no one's better than these niggas, dog. I was like, <laughs> uh, who else? Uh, and it's on a sci-fi fantasy because remember the when we're young when the boogie monsters dropped their first fucking album. Yes, yes, definitely, dude. <laughs> and then. Some people may not be science fiction, but if you listen to Physical Stamina by J. Rue, the beat feels science fiction as shit. So, right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. yeah, it's a, it's a lot of cats yeah. doing that. So, uh, all those elements put together, um, you know, the, is, so is that, my bad, the same as what you're, you're putting all together? So when you say, okay, well, I'm going to do science fiction hip hop that's what to expect like you know a cellar mm -hmm. dwellers organized confusion mm -hmm. and, and, and and each album is is kind of different meadows in vitro that was it meadows in vitro it was yeah. my man derek meadows told me it was in vitro um mm -hmm. each album is kind of different like the one i'm doing with face is called the cleveland wars it's just about a dude a dude locked inside his basement and the technology has failed him you know, so he has to end up calling Uber sex to free his mind, you know, like, so, and, <laughs> you know, each, each EP is different. And, okay. and, and the thing about glitch that you remember this movie called, uh, princess diaries. You remember this movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember in the beginning how, uh, Columbo was talking to Fred Savage and he's telling him the story. So glitch is a story about an older brother tells his daughter that, look, I'm going to create the story, but I only have it in fragments. So it's about a brother telling the story about the future. Wow. And so every album is different. Some albums are straight pop mm -hmm. and some albums are, sh are straight noise and some are straight boom bap, but they all have the, the, th uh, the theme going through them all. Right. So the Messiah and glitch, this project is your solo project okay. yes yes and even though I'll, I'll probably get other people on it eventually like when i finish these eps but it's pretty much solo yeah and you told everybody that it's a four ep series right the first one i'm releasing called digital cassettes mm -hmm. it's like uh northeast southeast southwest northwest so those are like the the first four eps i'm doing and I'm not mixing them or mastering them or nothing. They're gonna be raw as fuck. <laughs> and if you want to do it, you know. But it, it wasn't like that. My first plan was to reach the Cleveland Wars with Face, but because of Corona, uh, the shit stopped. And and um, my man Sean Peoples, he used to do soccer records. He told me he was like, "Young, don't put out any full lengths because the Corona is just gonna wash over it." He was like, "If you got those EPs, you just keep putting the EPs out and just." And the video show, you're going to see some of the shittiest videos you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> you know, so it's, you know, it's either you like it or you don't, you know. So they're going to be like homegrown videos like this is Nick, this is Nigga, it's going to be me. Yes. It's going to be me with if somebody got shot with ketchup on them, you know. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Uh, yeah, no. Nah, yeah, I can't wait shit. for this. Like, okay, so the EP... Like, is it like six or seven songs or less? Like, is it going to be like... It's like it's like seven songs. The first one is called um, Light Splice, and John Moon did all the beats for this one. Okay. And one of the standout, one of the standout tracks is called Jay Dilla in Cyberspace because he cut up Lightworks by mm -hmm. Jay Dilla. And, um, and, if you, and I, I remember I sent everyone me rapping over this gunshot. I don't know if you heard it, but I sent... One and everybody's, uh, I'll put it back on my page. And it was just a video of me with my teeth over a light, you know, rapping the words. But the first one is called Digital Cassettes Light Splice, and I'm dropping it Equinox on the Equinox. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you're making videos for this, like. Wait till you see the first video, you'll be like, get this guy. <laughs> this guy's in series. <laughs> 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 well, it's great. Tim came up with the name, though. 
oh, you yeah. know, Messiah. And yeah. It, it, well, it, I, I was like, Tim, I'm thinking of something called, I want to use the word glitch and Messiah. And at first I was like, you know, something like dark glitch. And he was like, what about dark Messiah and glitch? And then I was like, well, let's, I'm going to say dark Messiah in glitch. He's like, cool. No, it was black Messiah. But then when D'Angelo came out with black Messiah, I was like, well, let me take off the black and write dark. So it was dark. It was originally called Dark Messiah and Glitch, but because of the DG and Death Grips and kind of how they're kind of running the world with that dark computer sci-fi shit, right. my man Sam Levine, he was like, "Young, yeah, just call him Messiah and Glitch," and I was like, "Perfect." <laughs> That's dope. And you said it's coming out when? Equinox. The September twenty-first is when I'm gonna drop the first video, the first two videos, and I'm gonna do them live on IG. And then I'm going to really literally record them over Audacity and just mix and just baby whatever. I'm not going to even mix that shit. I'm just put it up and you go listen to that shit. And then when I finally get the money and get and able to get to DC, you know, then I'll, you know, I'll put them out professionally. Word. But the, but the key, my model for glitches, I'm moving at the speed of information. Okay. Like, yeah. Like, but the next EP may drop two weeks later. I, I don't really, I'm not really thinking about a time. I'm thinking like cyberspace energy. Okay. So everyone look out for that. Uh, Messiah and Glitch. Four EPs. One video. <laughs> oh, one sure. video. Yeah, man. Um, so who is Scott Lott? Okay, in Messiah and Glitch, I make anyone who wants to be a part of it, they got to use two names from athletes. So Scotty Pippen and Ronnie Lott. So I just use Scott Lott. Um. <laughs> My man Dimon used Refrigerator Rose for, like, Refrigerator Perry, I think, and Derek Rose. I can't remember. Uh, you know, and I thought of a bunch of names, like Brad Bundy. It was, like, <laughs> King Kong Bundy and uh, this other football player. So it was a bunch of shit, you know. <laughs> so if you ever if, – if I, if I ever get anyone in Messiah and Glitch, you remember, you got to think of two athletes. They could, you know, one, one – my friend Nadia, she came up with Flo Lee, which is Flo Joe and Bruce Lee. So, you know. Right. Yeah. So is that is that Dark Dent as well? Dark Dent is Dak Prescott and Richard Dent. Yep. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Allen Allen is uh Tim for Allen Iverson and who's the other Allen? Ray Allen, I think. Oh okay. Jordan Bryan. So so basically two two sports like, you know, athletes. Mm -hmm. And it could be like, they could even be martial artists. They could even be ballet dancers to a certain, because that's come some athletic shit. But yeah, two sports cats, basically. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So you've been, um, you've been recording um, and featured on some songs, new songs. Yes. Um, yes. Who have you been working with? I did a joint with Artemis. He's, I, think he, I think he's supposed to put it out soon. I'm not sure. I did I did some with Shamir, of course, Warm. That's my shit. Mm -hmm. um, um, of course, Cornell West Theory. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell this, but I'm working with Prowess the Testament. Um, yes, and Tim Waterguns by the Cornell West Theory is science fiction <laughs> hip-hop. Yes, fuck yes. What the fuck was I thinking? Science fiction is shit. Oh, in the corner of Western, we're going to drop the New World Order kids, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, you also did uh, a song with Shamir, right? Hell yeah, Warm, yeah. I did a bunch of shit with Shamir. I'm trying to think who else I did some shit with. I just know I did it with... Right now, of course, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think that's about it, if I can remember. Sub Z, love you, my nigga. Word. So check out for all these songs Rashad has been featured on. <laughs> the all, all, <laughs> all 20 songs <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, it, sure. it will be out there soon hopefully we'll know we'll know by then but soon yeah yeah definitely yeah, we, man <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. oh we got to or oh, that's coming forever <laughs> word um what are your thoughts I'm, about the amphibians coming back together I'm totally down. Totally. Totally. I mean, that's, that's our root. So why not, why not extend it with the branches that when we grew, that don't mean that the root can't still rise with the branches. Right. Let's go. And, you know, and even Freestyle Union, I will, uh, 
Thalo Blue, Sub Z. I love to work with uh, Sub Z and them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big up to Sub Z. Sub Z. And um, I, I was trying. I'm trying. We were talking about it, but uh, Hacker Phoenix, me and Tyrone. I'm trying to work with everyone. So definitely amphibians. Fuck yeah, of course. <laughs> That's the blood right there. Word. Do you recall any um, sessions back then? Hell yeah. Um, there's a chemistry song that I wish I could get from them niggas, Jay and Zach. And all I can remember, Jay saying, we are not yet down on wax. That's all I can remember him saying. I don't know what the song is called. I just know that I used to love that shit, man. Wow. Um, of course, I remember... Was it like under? It was like a song. Was it you, Philly, and Khalil like underwater or something? It was like one of the first amphibian songs. I can't remember what it was called. Um, I remember one million MCs into the dead zone with Claude. Yes. Because I'm I'm because in, in glitch I'm a, I'm gonna go one million one million androids into the dead zone. So I'm a I'm a <laughs> I'm gonna flip that again. Bring it bring it back. I remember intergalactic control with Claude and Khalil. That was shit till this day. I remember that shit to this day. Um, fermented bells, of course. Fermented bells, yes. Um, Definitely. Lyrical abuse with me and Philly, but it got erased. Remember when Philly took like seven hours to do yeah. this verse? <laughs> 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 but he killed it. But he killed it. Yeah, yeah, uh, I remember that. I was getting upset. <laughs> oh man. It was a song with uh remember this song with Khalil and Yazara? It was fucking unbelievable. Mm. Of course, zero degrees. Zero degrees of hibernation, yes. Come on, man. Um remember this freestyle with Zach, Shamir, and Juan? And Shamir was like, I, I fell on a pile of leaves. And John was like, Zach, quick fucking with the echo now. You remember this? You <laughs> dude, I wish we had this joint. Oh man. Uh I also remember this song with, and nobody has it with, Indeed and Shamir. Mm. And I think he said, no need for Gmail, no need for email or Gmail because both got the virus or some shit like that. It was ridiculous. Wow. Yeah, I remember a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you have it, y'all. There's, there's a lot of songs we did. <laughs> of course, Gravity. Gravity by John was... Gravity, yes, by John Moon. Oh, my Ronda God. Rain. You know, um, so what is the future for uh, for you, Rashad? Like, uh, since you're a writer, do you think of planning to write books? Possibly. I ju I just finished my first writing my first graphic novel. It's called Conversations with Aborted Babies, and it's about what an aborted baby has to do to get back in the womb. It's like she has two weeks to get back into the womb. And so she has to like. I'm trying to say it without giving it away, but who gives a fuck? I just, I just tell you, it's like you gotta <laughs> see the shit anyway. Exclusive. Um, yeah. So basically, she has to. She li they live in sewers, right? Okay. And she has to tie this worm. She has to go to her ex parents' house and get a what it would have been her baby picture on her locket, and she has to tie this worm around it. And then she has to go to this field where storks will come and kind of recycle her. But then she asks the question, does she want to do it? So it's pretty fucking cool, you know, and I ain't trying to, you know, to my own horn. Right. And, um, but yeah, I wrote my first graphic novel. I've been writing a lot of poetry mm -hmm. and, um, like I'm trying what, to work back. What would people put it under if it, Fan if it like, like fantasy. fantasy and stuff like that? Yeah. Right? And, um, I wrote this thing, it's, 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 I started with this like this horror graphic novel about a, a really fat dude who has to lose weight, but he but he runs it, but it becomes like a horror, you know, and like all these he sees all these dead chickens eating them at night and shit. But you know, you just got you know, it, I'm almost there. <laughs> um, we wrote a um, me and Tim came up with this idea. We, we were talking about Amsterdam. And he came up with this idea, what if men were in the red light district? So we came up with this idea called Mr. Red Light. So it's about like a prostitution, but if men were in the glass, you know? So it's cool as shit. Like, it's cool as shit, actually. And um, 
and you know it's uh so i've been writing joe i've been writing like shit dog when i when i when I, I, I got like stacks upon stacks of writing and remember that dark piano hip-hop i used to do with miscellaneous flux yes hitchcock like alfred hitchcock hip-hop mm -hmm. I'm about to do some more of that now because I want to be the first nigga before anybody. I know a nigga right now is thinking I should do like if Hitchcock meets hip hop. I want to do it right now before Bama's gank that shit. <laughs> I bet you'll do it just right, man. Just like, you know, just definitely, man. Um, so, yeah. So look out for writings, poetry, and books by Rashad in the future. Um with all the groups that you've mentioned that you're part of, are there any possibilities besides Cornell West Theory, because you're still doing stuff with Cornell West Theory, but mm -hmm. with miscellaneous flux getting back together and doing recordings or maybe fusing all of the groups together? I, I would love to... I, I, I was talking to Ben recently. I was like, even if we don't do flux, as long as we work together, right? Like, um, and if we did flux, I would just think of it as a project, not so much of a band, because a band is really hard to do without the, uh, like, man, you got to respect bands. If you don't have the capital, it, bands are kind of hard to do, especially if two people are in different cities, right? You right. know, but I wouldn't mind eventually doing like some type of EP in like. In like in the future, maybe like like three songs, just like like because there was a second album we were working on that never got done, and those songs still are dope as shit to this day that I wouldn't mind like recording and putting down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, dope, man. So, uh, where can people find you on social media if like your music and stuff? Uh, right now, just go to the Cornell West Theory Bandcamp. Come to come to my IG page, Messiah and Glitch. I got a bunch of them, but Messiah and Glitch is the main one. Um, so I mean, that's pretty much where all I have the music up. You can go on YouTube and look, and type in Miscellaneous Flux Dead and Dreams, and you can hear the whole album. It's up there. Um, but um, y'all got to hear "Let the Dirt Say Amen." You got to hear uh, Tim is about to drop a new project, and if you heard the Bullets, that shit was a fucking masterpiece. Uh, and I ain't even saying that because that's my man. You know, that, that shit was dope. But we did that sitcom when we wrapped up with sitcoms. I think people should check it out. I still, I fucks with that joint. Right, right. Um, that that yeah, last joint you guys put out. Right? Yeah, that shit was fat. It was, it was, it was actually, you know, it was actually like a sneak. Like, I, I was surprised that it kind of came out jive that good. I was like, damn, that shit is all right. Word. So, yeah, Cornell West Theory on Bandcamp. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> Word. Um, any last words you want to say to everybody? Oh man, man, stay, stay, stay as, stay as healthy as possible during this pandemic, because you know people are going through shit. Uh, you know, create as much as possible because you ain't gonna have the the same time once it changes. When, when you know, create as much as possible. Uh, stay fit, and, stay fit as you can and healthy. I mean, you ain't got to be Lawrence Taylor, but just move. Move and stay fit as possible. Yes, um, yes indeed. That's it, right? You Well, you yeah, guys man. heard it from the man, Rashad. Give it up for Rashad Dobbins, a.k.a. Scorpion, a.k.a. Scott Dent. I mean, Scott Lott. Scott Dent is Scott dope. Dent. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Dent. Uh, oh, I'm yeah, yeah. A.k.a. Dark Dent. And, and to you... Uh, and to all you, give it, give it, give it, your day is over soon, nigga. <laughs> it's almost over. The Nirvana is coming to wipe you out, you know. Word. And y'all, order this seed, seed popular Indeed. t shirt, the Love Tan That's Dream right. joint. It's the seed popular. Go to, his, go to his IG, get a t shirt from his bio joint, link on the bio and stuff. But yeah, oh, man. and one, one more good memory. When we opened up for Company Flow and Organized Confusion. Oh, yeah. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yes. Um, yeah. That was, that was very dope. Um, tune yeah. in next Wednesday. We got um, Coyote, a.k.a. Indeed. 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 That's his, my nigga. And his name used to be Steve-O. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Um, 
definitely. So it should be very, very interesting. He'll be he'll be live from Amsterdam. Steve will make you rap. He push you in the cipher if you don't want to or not. <laughs> and so that's what it's about. Word. Um, I like to thank Rashad for doing this. Thanks. Um, check out the amphibian page uh, for all the other episodes. See Khalil, Shamir, Jamal. Well, OJ Fresh, Boogeyman. OJ Ghost. Fresh. Earth you know One Northeast, love you too, sis. Word. Word. All right, y'all. Peace. Type one. Peace. They quarantine O H I O with propaganda scares of warfare bio. But I know this pre martial law slideshow is a glimpse of a nightmare sideshow with the kids OD on pyro. I'm the file starter, twisted file starter, laser searing out siliconic shotters. I shot ya, sonics and your optics burst from disease emerged. Super Jesus, sir.